What is up, YouTubers? So I got to clean this mess off of uh, my mad science experiments, and we're going to talk about carbon arc gouging or air arc. Let's get into it. All right, guys. So if you've been around in the heavy repair industry or welding in general for a while, you're probably somewhat familiar with this process. If you're new, you probably have never heard of this or don't know what it does. And I had a couple of viewers ask about it and I thought, well, why not do a quick video on it? We can talk about how it works as well as the feasibility of doing this process on a welder at home. So we'll be getting into that as well. But what we have in front of us is part of a carbon arc gouging setup. And this is really the main part that you need. Sometimes people call it air arc, I call it carbon arc. That's what they're referring to is this process. Now, what we have here is essentially a stinger or an electrode holder that's very similar to like what you would find on a stick welder, just a lot bigger. And there's one key difference. This has an airline hookup that goes to an airline inside and air comes out the jaw where the carbon rod goes into this. And the purpose of this is it functions kind of like stick welding. You create an arc. The arc does not deposit any metal and the air that sprays out of this jaw here uh, basically washes the molten pool away. So if you can imagine if you had liquid metal and you blew compressed air at it, it would throw molten metal everywhere. You get an idea of how this process works. Now let's take a look at the electrodes to start things off. So in front of us, we have two carbon rods that are used for this process. Let's look at this little guy here. This is a quarter inch carbon and it's very, very light. If you've ever picked one of these up, they're kind of shockingly light when you're used to picking up stick electrodes. And the reason is all this is is graphite or carbon with a copper coating. The co coating, I believe, is just to aid electrical conductivity to the jaw of the electrode holder, but very, very light. And the reason is there is no metal core in this. There's no flux on this. All this is used for is to pass electricity into the metal that you're removing a weld or gouging out porosity, whatever it is you're doing. This is merely used as the sole purpose of an electrode. So in a way, kind of like a TIG welder, except in TIG, you don't consume the tungsten. This is a consumed item just designed to handle massive amounts of current. Now, this process requires a ton of power. And later when I talk about the feasibility of doing this at home, you'll understand in a hurry where the problem is with that. To give you an idea, this quarter inch carbon, I run at 200 plus amps, and that's a quarter inch. This is considered an average to, well, realistically, a small one. This would be useful for a two or three pass weld to remove it on three eighths plate. When you start getting into big, big welds, this is far too slow and going up in carbon size really helps you out getting the job done faster. Now they do make these smaller than this. They make them super small. I've never used the real small ones. I don't really have a use for them at that point. They make flat ones, which can like remove a strip of material. And of course they make gigantic ones like this bastard, which uh, the funny thing, the story on this, this is a half inch carbon. And my work got a, like three boxes of these for free because they were sitting at the welding store and they just said, here, take them, we don't need them. Well, to put it in perspective, this half inch carbon here requires, I think somewhere around 800 amps. The biggest welder at my work is 500 amps and that's a uh, Gold Star 400, so that's not even capable of running this rod. And I have an engine drive welder, a diesel, big big blue 500, not even that could run this. So this is sitting in a box of these, multiple boxes, and nobody can use them, but they're fun to look at because of how ridiculous it is, but 800 amps on this bastard. So that's for big welds and getting stuff done in a hurry as well as for raining down metal on unsuspecting co-workers, probably pretty good at that. But yeah, so I think you understand a little bit more about this. Let's talk a little bit about the electrode holder. 
This electrode holder is very similar to what you would find with stick welding as far as the overall design. However, it does have a key important difference and that is the air ports on it because there's the airline like Ed mentioned earlier. Now to operate this, what you do is you get ready, you find the weld that you decided is either too ugly, too bad, or just needs to be cut out. And you open this valve here, you strike an arc, and by the way, you push with this. It's not like stick where you generally drag. And you create an arc with the air going and you push and you wash that metal right away. Now, for those that obviously have not used this process, this has quite the reputation for pissing people off in the shop. <laughs> where I work, one guy in particular does not like it when I run this, so I make sure I run it as much as I possibly can because screw that guy. But no, anyways, this is so ungodly loud. And the reason is... When you press this push-pull valve open, you have whatever your shop air is that's hooked to it, and keep in mind, that is a very big fitting, is wide open. There is no throttle control. Uh, it's the restriction of your line is the throttle. So it's either all on or pretty much nothing. And the reason for that is you need a massive amount of air jet out to wash the metal that you're creating, your molten metal, off of the plate. So it's extremely loud and it also throws sparks everywhere. And I'm not joking, guys. If you're not careful using this, you will light everything around you on fire, including yourself. And I'm going to talk. I've, I've lit myself on fire before. I'm not joking. So you, you've got to be very careful with this. The benefit is massively fast weld removal. I can remove some kind of part of a bucket or an implement in a matter of minutes and have a clean surface that's almost ready to be re-welded in no time. I'm talking like minutes. If you were to take an angle grinder or even worse, a burr bit, you'd be at it for 12 hours straight to remove what this can do in four minutes. You're probably thinking to yourself, man, that sounds like something I need to get into awesome process, right? And it is. The problem is, is that I hate to tell you guys, the feasibility of doing this in the home is virtually non-existent. Now, I could care less about the sparks or the danger of fire from that. I mean, we, we're men, we can figure it out, right? But the problem is, is the cost and the feasibility of having a welder big enough to run this. So cost perspective wise, this apparatus, as you see it here, is about $700. So that's pretty extreme just to have an implement to make something possible. And that doesn't include the big air compressor you're gonna need, which by the way, to run this, you're gonna need typically an 80 gallon compressor with a seven and a half horse motor for intermittent continuous duty, probably more towards the continuous. A five horse 60 gallon would be intermittent use because again, you're going wide open on that sucker. So you need a lot of air to actually make this feasible. So added compressor, 700 bucks for this. The rods themselves generally aren't that bad. They're like 27 bucks for 50 for like quarter inch or 316, maybe a little bit more like 7,500. So the rods aren't too expensive, but everything else that you need is expensive, including the welder. And I had numerous people ask me about the feasibility of carbon arc gouging on a home welder. And I gotta tell you guys, no, it's not going to happen. And let me explain. Over here, I have the diameter of carbon electrode and the amp that it runs at. The amperage rating is kind of like the minimum middle of the road for the particular diameter. So eighth inch, 90 amps, 532, 120 amps, and then so on. And by the way, I misspoke earlier. Quarter inch carbons run at, I run them at about 300 amps. I think I said 200 amps, but it's 300 amps is what I run them at. 316s, I run at 200. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, this, eh, maybe this probably can't run in the home, but these two I surely can, right? And that's where you would be mistaken. And that's the leads to the crux of the problem of carbon arc. So an eighth inch 7018, which operates at about 24 volts when you're welding, is a 2,880 watts to run that rod. Now this is not assuming any kind of inefficiencies of your welder. This is just how much wattage 120 amps at 24 volts is that the 7018 runs at. 
with a 532 carbon that's 120 amps, same as 8th inch 718, you require 5,400 watts of power. That is what is consumed to run that rod. And you're probably asking yourself, well, Jesus, why is it? And the answer is simple. Carbon arc operates at 40 plus volts. The higher the voltage mixed with that amperage leads to very high wattage, aka the power demand that's required to run this is astronomical. To put it in perspective, a 532 carbon requires the same input power from your welder uh, as 225 amps on an eighth inch 7018. So that is the crux of the problem here is that carbon arc requires a massive amount of power. Not only does it require a massive amount of power, it's very taxing on a machine. I actually metered out a machine I was running to get an idea of the voltage that it was operating at. And what I saw is massive swings in voltage while I was arc gouging. And I'm a pretty smooth gouger, to be honest. And the voltage swings were 30 to 60 volts. And that at that kind of amperage, it, it wrecks hell on a machine. And this is not something that I would recommend to anyone to do on a 200 amp class stick machine. Even eighth inch rods are gonna tax that machine to the limit. And speaking of the voltage issue, I did a video a while ago on why 6010 won't run on your inverter or on most inverters. And that's because uh, most inverters can't handle more than 30 volts uh, closed circuit. So while you're welding 30 volts, well, this process runs at 40 plus. So if you can't run 6010 properly, there isn't a hope and a prayer that you would be able to carbon arc on it. It just does not have enough voltage, period. So realistically in the home, unless you're pushing a 250 amp class machine with a really good duty cycle, you're, the only rod you might be able to run is an eighth inch carbon. And that honestly is pushing it. You're probably over time gonna damage your machine. Not worth it. So I would not recommend trying to do this, especially because you gotta remember, $700 plus investment for this. You need a air compressor with a uh, decent output. I mean, this is a huge investment just to run eighth inch carbons. Like, eh, I don't know about that. The feasibility of it's pretty limited. Now, if you have a generator welder, your ability to do this is far better. However, you guys gotta remember that this again, still isn't something that you should be doing on a 200 amp class generator welder. Generator welders generally can output a lot more voltage, so the voltage isn't an issue. They'll actually run like an eighth inch carbon uh, or bigger. The issue is, is the duty cycle and just the ability to handle that kind of energy. Now, say like the Harbor Freight Outlaw 195 generator welder, 195 amps, the best carbon you might be able to run on that would be an eighth inch. It probably would keep it lit, I don't think that'd be an issue, but the duty cycle of that machine is probably 30, 40%, and you're gonna basically run in an eighth inch carbon, gonna max that out, and you're probably in the long run gonna overheat the windings or God knows what else, and I just don't see that as being a long-term solution. And that is why when you get in a big generator welders, like the Trailblazer 325, which realistically is a small generator welder in industry, that is capable of running quarter inch carbons, but it's better off running 316ths. Uh, it can do that for quite a bit. So you really need a, a pretty stout generator welder to be running this stuff. Not to mention, unless you have an air pack generator welder, you're gonna need a separate air compressor as well. So that's added cost. And that's why, again, I don't think the feasibility of doing this in the home is really gonna be that good. And I'm sharing this with you so that you guys don't go out and buy the $700 apparatus and wind up finding out that you can't run this because this is only half the story. It's the voltage and everything else that's the issue. All right, let's go to conclusion. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit about carbon arc and you probably learned that the feasibility of doing this in a home is pretty limited. Everything about it is expensive other than I guess the rods are fairly affordable, but this isn't something that a lot of us, I guess, would really need. It would be handy to have because we could get a two hour job done in 10 minutes with it. But again, the feasibility in the home is pretty limited. Now, for those of you that want to get into repair work, 
Uh, it pays really good money to be able to cut out big welds and repair stuff like on excavators and buckets and all of that. But again, you have to have a pretty expensive machine. I mean, the, the bare bones engine drive welder that can do this process is probably around seven to eight grand. Plus you need an air compressor on board a truck to do it or at your house. So again, the feasibility of this pretty limited, unfortunately. I wish it wasn't the case, but hey, it is what it is. Now, for most of us that are welding on sheet metal and thinner material, this really isn't too useful because, well, for one, you really don't need it. And two, spraying your shop with sparks worse than like five acetylene torches at once really isn't too useful. At some point in the future, I'm going to get some arc footage of this process. For the time being, uh, I don't want to have to dodge my boss to get it done so i think you guys understand but hopefully the pictures did a little bit of justice to what's actually going on with this and like i said guys if you can stick weld decent you can art gouge that it's all of the same stuff realistically so if you're a good stick welder this is no walk in a park for you with that said thanks for sticking around for the video hopefully you learned something until next time